Welcome to Embedded Programming with Go. Now, as you know, I've been struggling to get GoBot to use one of the many motor control boards that I've tested in a consistent way such that I can build a platform. So this is section six in which my focus is going to be to get a basic platform for my robot, right? My Wi-Fi controlled robot. And if you don't know, if you're jumping in now, you probably want to jump back to the beginning of section six or earlier to see what is my objective here. So in the last video, I had some issue or the last two videos, part three and four, I had some issues with the SB component Raspberry hat, Raspberry Pi hat. And this is a board that's supposed to use like GPIOs to control up to four motors, only though we're trying to get it to work with two. And there's a Pi library that seems to work. And technically, GoBot should be able to use those GPIOs the same way and be able to control the motors, but we weren't um, getting it to work. Okay. With that, I put that aside, just like I've put aside a number of other boards where the combination of either a motor shield and board didn't work really quite well, or we had a really nice board that worked really well, but then the microcontroller um, didn't work well either, or we didn't have Wi-Fi. So for example, we had the uh, Citron board, which is really good motor control board, and it worked really well with um, an Arduino, but Arduino doesn't have Wi-Fi. So unless I paired with a Wi-Fi shield, that's the only way I'm gonna be able to have this goal of a robotic platform that I can control sort of remotely. I switched to a Raspberry Pi and I've been thinking that, oh, the Raspberry Pi has enough power and everything to allow me to do exactly what I want. And the first motor controller we tried with it is this, um, SB, is the SB component shield. And now I'm going to try this Adafruit um, motor hat, which is an I squared C board and basically it means that instead of using GPIO, it used this I squared C bus, which is basically just two wires minus ground and power. So it's a lot fewer wires to control. Um, really you only using two signal and wire because ground and power is always sort of there. Um, so you're only using two wires really for signaling and there's a data pin and a clock pin. So anyway, in this video, I'm gonna go through the assembly of this board. Now I'm not gonna spend a lot of time going through the assembly. I'm gonna show you basically what the board is about and then quickly solder it up and do a quick test. And so you can see the board there. And so it says that oh, it um, supports DC or stepper motors. Um, you can do up to four DC motor or two stepper motors. Um, I'll show a little close up of the board um, or actually there's some better picture in here I can show you. And uh, so this, for example, where they connected two stepper motors. Um, and so it mentions that the Pi doesn't have a lot of GPIO pins, which we, we sort of know and hence why we had to install a Pi Blaster, which is really cool about this board. It uses I squared I2C. So what that means, or I squared C, uh, what that means is that um, you only need like two data pins, right? Um, the CEDA data, AI and um, the clock. So like this is the data and then this is the clock of how fast to move the bits along, the signaling. And of course you need ground, right? Um, but at least in terms of the number of GPIOs you're gonna be using, it's not the uh, six or whatever we're using for that SBC board or any other similar type of board that was an I squared C. And so I'm not gonna talk about how I squared C work exactly, but just know that this is a really good benefit because it frees up our other GPIO. The other thing is they have fully dedicated um, pulsed modulated driver chip on this board. So again, we don't have to worry about anything weird or anything like that or using anything like Pi Blaster um, for this board. And they went on to state some insane things where you can stack, you know, up to 32 of these boards. If you imagine <laughs> four motors per board and you could stack 32 of them, then you could create an insane looking robot or whatever that uh, where you can control 128. Of course, imagine that you have to supply the power for that. Um, but anyway, they give an example here of two of their boards stacked together. Um, we're not doing anything that weird. But I think this is a, a pretty good 
picture of this board. And I, I, the more I look at it, now that I was going over the, the overview, I realized that it's actually a much nicer board than I, I originally thought. The fact that it has the high squared C is one, um, that is a real plus for freeing up so many GPIOs on a project like this, where my plan is to add different type of devices and sensors or whatever over time. I don't know exactly what I'm going to add, but it's good that I'll, um, you know, it frees up some of those GPIOs. I can also add I squared C devices to sensors and so on. Um, the only thing that's sort of a little bit on the low end for this board versus the other boards that we look at is the current per channel. You know, this is 1.2 amp, and I still think that's capable, um, pretty decent. Um, I haven't looked exactly at a current draw for this motor, these motors that I've been using, but I don't think they're more than one amp. And the peak is three amps. And again, pretty decent. It's just that if you compare that to our um, Citron board where it had about 10 amps continuous and could spike up to, I think, 30 amps or something like that, that's crazy. Um, it's using the L293. Um, D driver, which I think we've seen on other boards. I can't remember. There's so many L298 and N and all these other things. But let's just take a minute to look at this board. Um, so it says, you know, DC or stepper motor hat. So two DC motor or four stepper motor. I give you all this nice um, facts right on the board. So if you had multiple boards and you wanted to quickly pick up a board and just see what it's about. I like when they put some information on the board. And we can see these two are for motor one, there's a ground, um, these are the two for motor two, um, these two for motor three, um, ground two for motor four. And so if that's your four DC motors, or if you're doing stepper motors, then you'd use four of these pins um, to control the stepper motor phase, four phase stepper motor, whatever those are. And so hence two motor. And then this is your separate power supply. They give you a power rail here. So there's all these pins on the outside here are just ground. So if you need to tie anything to it, just pick one of these pins as you ground. Um, three volts is right in the middle and five volts. I think that's pretty clever. In terms of your A squared C address, each board can have a certain address. And um, I'm not going to do anything with the address yet, but um, I'll just use it as it is to see if it works, if we have to change the address in any way. Okay, so let's so that's the overview of the board. Um, for I mean, it's it's pretty ch cheap board. Um, well, reasonable. I think it's not too bad. Um, and so now they gave some facts here and so on. But if you scroll down to assembly, they have a nice little page where they make, give you some suggestion on how to assemble it. And you'll see, I pretty much. Um, went through a little, show you a little fast video now of me assembling it and pretty much went along and did the exact same thing where I used the tip of attaching this header to the Raspberry Pi and then resting the board on it. The only other thing I did was I put the stack stacker, stacks on so, um, this, so that um, when I lean on the board or anything like that, it, all the strain wouldn't be on one side. And so I would suggest that you do that also you'll see that in the video um as i play it um it, it's i took i don't know maybe 10 15 minutes i don't even i didn't count how long or time how long i took to solder it but no point in me slowing down to show you just soldering soldering is sort of boring right um so okay so that's assembly and you know putting in the headers turn it over um the blocks and okay you're done examine your board powering up your motor this is where it gets interesting for us. And they tell you to connect the power supply. Um, if you remember seeing that there was five volts to 12 volts, that's pretty decent. That's right in the range of this battery that I'm using. That's 11.5 volts battery. Um, so I don't even use nine volt battery, which I've tried using in the past and I show you that it's always fail. Um, they give you some suggestion for power supply and stuff that you can use. And so they also mentioned that oh, the Raspberry Pi is powered up separately, that they recommend keeping the power supply for the volt for the motor and the Raspberry Pi separate. So I have the board assembled and I power it up. And as you can see, the light there, power light on the board, but it did not power up the rest of the, so it didn't supply any board to the Arduino, to the Raspberry Pi, which is fine. Uh, I wasn't sure what it's gonna do, so I went to power it up without the power, without um, external power to see if it also supplied power to the um, to board from to the arm um, thing and then there you go as you can see now that I plugged in that I have power and what I should do is put this on this so in case 
this start turning it doesn't get away from me um, so let's blink in there you can't see it but it's blinking started up so let's see if we can do a really really quick test so this is assembly and then we can do a full test later if I go to gobot.io and I do platform and then driver and then da, 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 let's see Adafruit motor hat which is what we have scroll down and if you look is the exact same board and they do not have an example well fear not let's go here to github and we go down to examples and then we look for Adafruit um, I don't see Adafruit here I can do a search Ada fruit oh raspberry pi adafruit ddc motor oh so they called raspberry pi adafruit instead all right so let's click on that and simple example let's do raw copy the whole thing copy that and let's go here and let's do um, so this is our directory our example let's do mk directory part five and let's go into five and do let's do code and it's coming up uh, let's do a file called go.mod and let's call it module let's call it rpi hat maybe um, ada hat maybe ada hat ada motor control um, hat ada raspberry pi motor hat <laughs> it doesn't really matter um i'm just trying to find something all right and then cmd command and let's put our main that go in this directory let's paste this in i'll save that and so let's see what is it doing um do not build by default okay uh let's see let's take that out save all right so this is using i squared c2 let's just run it and see um so i'll go back to the command line and go into cmd go build uh well actually i don't want to build this on my computer really i need to build this on the raspberry pi so let me go back up one and i'll just copy the entire directory over there so scp minus r That is what it should be with SSH2. Pi at this guy. This is what it's supposed to be. Okay, and then SSH pi at this. And there we go. Connect here. And then part five. I expect to see a directory called part five. Okay, so let's go in part five. <laughs> And let's do, there should be your file. Let's go to go build. Okay, go run. I could do build too. And see, go build. Okay, CD, CMD. That's where I wanna go. Go build. And if you wanna see what's what it's doing, the build command, you can do minus V to have an idea of what's going on. So if I stop this, for example, and I do minus V, I should see some details of what's going on. Um, though it's not showing me anything right now. I'm looking at the board. Uh, it does look like it's doing something, some blinking and what's not, just finish. Okay, um, had nothing to show me, I guess ls and there's my cmd command if i run this oh okay io error so this didn't work so it looked like i have to do some other sort of setup here on the raspberry pi to get this working so here they talk about installing their python driver for this board um but here's the part enabling i squared c and so we, I don't think we ever did this. I ever did this for my board, um, hence why I don't have that device. 
So let's go over and log into the Raspberry Pi. So I'm on SSH Pi and it's already powered up. And so if I do ls minus l dev and then I grab for um, C, let's do oh, uh, C. I2, I2, let's see if there's anything. And there's nothing. Okay, I don't have a I oh yeah, there is I C I two C device. Yes, I two C oh dash one. Um that's interesting. Um so um there's a I two C device. Okay. So hmm. um yeah, I do have a I squared C device somewhere in there. Um I don't know why. Um where is it? There it is. So I don't know why um the code didn't pick it up, the um, GoBot library. But let's just go through and do the setup. I'm not Python. I want to do Python. Um, enable um, I squared C. So let's do this. And so it says that in order to do this, you want Py SMB, SMBus. I don't think we need that. Um, let's just install this one sudo app get um, copy and let's do this i'll paste this and let's do that let's move this up a little bit um kernel supports okay so while that's doing that let's see run sudo raspi config and follow the prompts to install i2c support for arm core and kernel modules so go to interface option and on older version look under advanced but okay and then i squared c enable it and okay reboot okay so sudo raspi config yep and I believe I installed this, enable this before. That's why we see um, there's a device there. Um, so again, I want I squared C and yes, okay, enable it. Okay, okay, and then I should re reboot. So I tab over there, finish, and I don't think anything is going to change for me, but let's just do it anyway. So let's reboot. And then let's say, how do you test it? Um, okay. All the connected device. So let's see if we run this, we should have one device connected, which is our board. Um, I guess that's their address. So to show that two I2C devices are in use, one at address 40, the other one at address 70. Um, these values will be different for you depending on what is currently attached. And know that if you are using one of um, the very first Raspberry Pis, da, 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 then you will need to change the command to yada yada. Um, so I squared C detect I squared C detect minus Y1. So let's do that. Let's log back in. Let's do sudo I2 C detect uh, minus Y1. And so this is showing me two devices at address 60 and 70. So let's see, let's just try zero and see if that works. Okay, nothing there. So we are on one. All right, so SPI. Now test and configure, let's see. So let me double check that it's not an issue with my board and data hardware issue. So let's just go back and install the Python, do it the Python way, and see if this works. It says that um, installation of the motor kit, so let's do this. It looked like it ran and did all of that good stuff. So using the motor, um, let's see. So we've already connected power and motor, and so, of course, you'll need to install and support the library. So let's do this. I wonder if we could just copy a full example. Yep, there you go, full example, read my mind. Um, so download the project, okay. Let's call it this 
so let's do vim that that and start copy code paste it let's do escape save that and we should be able to run this now see py python 3 and if we do motor that all right that works so okay so we got that to work let's try rerunning our go application oh that still did not work so once again bitten by go for some strange reason where our um, motor seems to work when we use python so throttle equals 1.5 sleep um so this is uh let's see so sleep for not uh, one second but five seconds then let's do sleep for two seconds then throttle motor b to um 50 percent and then instead of making it then sleep for another three seconds and then try to model one to two percent then sleep for a little bit and try to model two ramp it up to a hundred percent can i do a negative do that then sleep for five seconds and then stop both of them motor one and motor two okay let's see if this example works two seconds this one should come on now okay that went now okay they all stop yeah um the five percent thing didn't work reverse worked but um well i think reverse worked um let's do 80 percent forward and then negative 50 percent the other direction let's see a negative 100. motor seems somehow slower um so this should go after two seconds they should start turning yeah couldn't get it to turn uh the other direction just sort of like me anyway it looked like it sort of work um can't say it's not working maybe i have to play the library um the only thing now is to get gobot to use this and so i'll look for right arrow with gobot and see where we land so and let's see here so if we do cat um, boot that config and we set dt ground bot rate okay if we add this and reboot I think we already enabled it hmm. okay let's do this sudo vim slash boot slash config and let's put this at the bottom okay set in let me make sure that this is not already in here we'll put this parameter okay there's some dt params spi on i2 squared on that's fine we already did that so the broad address broad rate sorry um so let's do that sudo reboot so it seems to work with the python library so i think this is a something with gobot for hope no most we shall see uh, this is so weird maybe i picked the wrong technology maybe i need to just give up with this old gobot and <laughs> just embrace like python or something this is super, super weird. Um, let's see if we can log back in. 
um, if it's up yet. SSH server is up. Okay, so it is up now. So let's see. Um, so part five, CMD, and then let's run the command CMD. Okay, still the same thing. Um, whatever this write error is to this device. So, and the Python code works. So let's do ls um, slash dev slash i to star. And so, hmm. So root i squared c, maybe this is ah, the permission on this thing. So maybe let me add pi user to this group. All right, so sudo vim slash etc slash group. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> that would be so silly. And so look for pi user. Oh, sorry, look for i2 squared user, i2c user. Oh, but pi is already in that group. There we go, here. <laughs> so that's not it. If I do id, uh, we see that pi user is id 1000, but the groups that are in, that pi is in, includes games, input, da da da, and i2c and SBI. So I should be able to use it. Um, also, if I do sudo dot command, if it was a permission problem, I should be able to still use it then. So um, not sure. No mm -hmm. oh, I2C user, only a group. Not sure, I'll have to keep doing some research here, but that's it. All right, take care. Uh, all right, bye.